Hello and welcome to the ArtsLink Assembly. This is week three of our five-week assembly, all online this year. The ArtsLink Assembly is our annual meeting of artists and arts organizations coming together to explore and advocate for the role that art and artists play in both building and maintaining a civil society. This week, we are very fortunate to be joined by uh, a very good friend uh, and artist, choreographer, artistic director, Faustin Lignyukula. Uh, Faustin runs the studios Kabako in Kisangani in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, out in the east of the, the country. Uh, and this year he uh, worked with a group of artists across the whole continent to look at their lives and the impact on their creative practice through this global health crisis. So Fasta will uh, talk to some of the artists featured in the film and explore many of the issues. And I'm looking forward to hearing him also tomorrow in conversation with Peter Sellers. So Fasta, are you there? Yeah. Ah, that's great. <laughs> you know, that's the magic of life. <laughs> so, hello, Simon, and thank you for having us here. And it's an honor to be on this panel this afternoon and to have joining us Ambrose Joshua from Lagos. Hey, Ambrose. <laughs> your, son, your, your sound is off. Yes. Yeah. OK. Yes. And so there's also Dorin Moka from Lubumbashi in the Southeastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Hi, Dorin. Hi. And there's Samuel Jafet from Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Hi, yes. everyone. And we are hoping to also have Ondiswa James from, uh, um, from Cape Town, South Africa, but she hasn't joined yet. We hope she'll join us later on. Um, so yes, you know, when this project came about uh, in, April, May this year, it was really in the middle of the first wave of the pandemic. And I could not imagine that would be meeting late October in the middle of a new wave, especially when you're in Europe or in North America. And so, I was imagining that it would be just for a short period of time, and then we'd go back uh, to our normal lives, whatever that means. But it seems that this situation is here to stay. So Ambrose, how is it? Um, how is the situation right now in Lagos? Thankfully, right now, as we speak, the situation in Lagos is a lot better than it was five days ago when the when the situation in Lagos go was the government had to come in and they pronounced the curfew. So that was one of the things that they used to actually subsidize the situation. So a coffee was announced three days ago. So the coffee was between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. So ah. since then, the situation kind of like, yeah, yeah, reduced. So we just have little or oh, one or two cases of brutality here and there, despite the fact that we, we've been protesting against it. But we still have some just rare cases around. We still have cases of the force men still trying to brutalize young boys and girls. But the situation is a lot better. I think what is going on right now is the judiciary um, 
aspect of everything. Every, the officers that are supposed to be brought to books have been charged to courts. We have youth representatives standing for the youth community in the country. So there was an update yesterday from a popular musician, his name is Faust, posted it on his Instagram. So we got a good update on how the meeting went. Some cases were attended to, some were adjourned, you know. But right now, as we speak, the situation in Lagos is calmer. Everybody's indoor. We're all trying to hide our heads. I know, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's getting better, actually. Uh, so, Kondiswa just also joined us. Thank you, finally. So, thanks for joining. How are you? You're I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's good to have you. You know, so we're all here. So, this is a miracle because internet is not always that smooth on the continent. And in the same way, I would say putting together this project, these letters from the continent was a miracle um, because it was in the middle of the pandemic and we were all a bit desperate and depressed. We didn't know what to do until Virginie who co-direct the studio Kabako, you know, uh, had this idea that, well, maybe we should just reach out and ask many of the younger artists on the continent how they are doing. And just that's how this, the project started. And then we had to put everything together to talk to you, to get videos from you and to edit, which for me, I view it as a miracle in the same way, being together this afternoon is like a little miracle. So how is the situation in Cape Town? I would say the situation in Cape Town is, it's different to when we were in quarantine, let me say, when we were in the moment of, of making the letters. So, I mean, we're in, in November now, we were doing this project August. Um, and no, besides the May, June. He May, June, my goodness, look at that. This is a long time ago. <laughs> Um, and it was, I mean, the global situation was fraught in a particular way, and that means it affected us in a particular way. But things felt a bit more repressive, right? Um, and because we were on like level four, and now things are a lot more chilled. But if anything, what it's shown us is that the structural stuff, which has always been there, is still there. And if anything, um, the kind of working class uh, like working class group of people have kind of fallen through into unemployment if i'm even thinking about my my street where i live which is a fairly kind of like cosmopolitan eclectic mix of like lots of different people from the continent um and there's a lot of homelessness in my street and after lockdown i would say it's doubled and there's a lot of drug use on my street and i would say it's doubled there's so you can just feel the strains on the economy, the things that did fall through, but the things that were always there, you know? Um, so the more things change, the more they stay the same, I'd say. So um, for both um, you, Kondiswa, and uh, Ambrose, um, would you say that um, the COVID-19 crisis is behind you from where you are because as we're talking from um, in Europe, um, it's really back in full force and not only uh, in terms of its uh, economic consequences, but also even as a, a real public health issue. How is it um, there? Um, I, sorry, I, I, I don't know if I must speak or Ambrose, but I, I, I can speak for now quick. Um, so there is a, a feeling, but also it's showing in the stats that um, people are showing up with symptoms more and more. So we had kind of flattened. I don't know if people remember that whole thing of flattening the curve. So it had yeah. flattened for September, bit of October. Um, and then in the last couple of weeks, it started picking up again. So people who are working in the hospitals are reporting that there's you know some mild cases. Um, but there is a there is a feeling like with the government that that doesn't necessarily mean like that we will be taken back to the original restrictions. Um, and that for the most part, I think that there is the hope that people will keep with the new kind of socialization about washing hands and masking, et cetera. 
um, there's still a lot of stigma around it, uh, especially in more rural areas, which is where my family's from, which is where I'm from. Um, so in some places, it's it's not even, I would say it's still any, even in its first stages, especially as, um, as a knowledge product that has to pass through a society. Um, yeah. Ambrose? Yeah, for me, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy in the sense that I have a lot of reservations about what's really happening in Lagos or in Nigeria or in my immediate environment. In the sense, in the heat of the COVID-19, that starting from April, May, up to June, yet they were, the government kept on announcing cases of coronavirus and all. And me as an artist, as, as an individual also, looking at my immediate environment, looking at what is actually going on, the numbers don't, don't just match in the sense that it, 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 it kind of like seems like human virus in human form are even more dangerous than the actual COVID. Uh, I'm pros, now, you pass the COVID, uh, I'll say we pass the whole wide the COVID ship. The number of the government did not actually, doesn't actually match up with people found that the force lady mark. Sorry, can you hear me? Uh yeah, yeah, you're really okay. breaking you're breaking up. So Hello? it it was very difficult to hear you. I don't I don't know if it if it would help to deactivate your video and just this way we can have at least better sound or oh, we lost you. Uh, Doreen, how is the situation in Lubumbashi? Because to pick you know, from what Ambrose was saying, I have this feeling that mm -hmm. there is, um, there, in many of our countries on the continent, there is a big problem with trusting what authorities, the public authorities are saying. You know? And so how is it in Lubumbashi now? Yeah, I, I think the, 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 the coronavirus itself uh, the, the coronavirus situation is more calmer and seems to be co under control, even if we don't, you know, trust what the government uh, says. So, as you say, there is a, 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 a trust uh, crisis between the government and, and, and people and, and the population. But uh, at the same time, here in Lubumbashi, I think even before, there was not a lot of victims from the coronavirus. But there is uh, consequences of, of that of that health uh, crisis because money uh, doesn't circulate. People don't have money. People are, are losing their jobs. So there is a consequences of that, and you can feel it in the city. And another uh, aspect is uh, the security. There is a lot of case of insecurity, protests, and even this morning, the government decided to start the you know controlling the the paper, the car paper, and as you know, for seeing a lot of buses don't have paper to work. So that means for the next four weeks, they will not work. So you already start a tension between drivers and police. Uh, yeah, so there is a lot of tension, money doesn't circulate. So I think that for me, that is the virus we, we need to fix uh, uh, now. And Samuel, quickly, how is it in Dar es Salaam? You just, uh, have you had the elections or is it this weekend? Uh, your sound, your sound is off. Your sound is off. Please unmute. So basically, I mean, currently like we are in the week of the election. I mean, the big election just happened yesterday and uh, we had some crazy things like the internet, uh, I mean, was shut down. So even today, I'm wondering like why is it possible to call through Zoom because no more on WhatsApp and we cannot access anything. But uh, I mean, regarding the COVID-19, I mean, uh, we had some cases late, I mean, uh, late in March and then we until June. 
and then uh, the government, I mean, the president say that Corona, like we just have to learn how to live with it because it's gonna stay for a longer period. So then we didn't have any uh, restrictions around and uh, we had some schools like were closed, but some other normal activities, everything was going on, but it's just in the art sector, like nothing's real happening. It's like most like we are, like we have mixed people, like mixed audience and we, like we have to organize different gatherings and events, but we need like a lot of people like mixed audience, you know, and uh, currently like it's really hard to do so, I mean, to organize such a event, but I mean, regarding the Corona, I mean, currently like we, we are just free, like we are living normal life as, as it means. <laughs> Does it yes. mean, is it the government that's preventing the art sector from operating? Mm, I mean, it's uh, because of the audience, because some people, I mean, are currently like still uh, like, okay, so there's some festivals and activities which have been organized in the last months, but there is no so much, I mean, uh, the turn up of the audience is not really a lot, so, because people are still afraid so in some ways. Mm -hmm. mm. And and when the president says uh, actually corona is not really here or if it is then we learn to live with it do people trust i mean people like it went silent for like almost a week like people were just like because in the i mean before the announcement i mean we had almost like eight like almost 400 people like 400 cases of covid-19 and then one week after the president said like it's not there because it seems like he he blocked the i mean the announcements of the cases every week because we had like regular like announcements about the cases like today's people are this much today people are this much so then he blocked those like announcements and then after one week later he, he just came with an announcement that <laughs> there's no colon <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah Ambrose, you're back. It's good uh, to have you back. You were you were talking. Uh, no, so we were talking about the trust in what the government say. Uh, uh, your microphone is muted. Your microphone is muted. Okay. Am I good? Now you're fine. Can you yeah. Now you're good. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I was just trying to explain how human viruses in human form are actually more dangerous than the actual virus. So the virus in human form? The COVID period, which is from April, May, June number we are two certain number yes. Can I suggest maybe they took off the video? Uh, Ambrose, sorry, but we really can't hear you. I don't know if you can just keep the sound and switch up the video. Just try that. Hmm. Hello, Ambrose? Ah, uh, Kondiswa, could you just, would you like to say something on this trust thing? <laughs> yeah, so um, I think it's, for me, it's it's a general problem. And I think it was a problem even at, at the first instances of the corona. And even now, I mean, so so this thing of fake news, oftentimes we're being told, or we're feeling like that we're going to move back to level three. Um, but then I see on the news this morning that the government is saying, okay, we're definitely not going to move into level three. But then again, where is this news coming from, right? Like what's reliable, what's not? I actually haven't heard an announcement from the president in like a month. 
So, and during, at the height of, of, the, of the infections, he was coming on every couple of weeks, um, trying to assuage the people, but also you, you can tell it's, it's, it's controlling tactics. So I think this is also why we can't really trust the information, why it seems like, because it's released at particular times, right? And it seems like it comes with agendas. Um, so not really being able to, oh, I see Ambrose is back. I do, I, I'm really interested to, to, to hear about their context. So this is also why. You know, and so just quickly, how is it, um, how is the artistic scene doing I mean, in Cape Town right now? So things are opening up slowly, um, event spaces. So I, I, I've been primarily now working in the theater and I would say from about two, two and a half months ago, I was already putting up work but at like a fringe theater in Cape Town, which is, they, they've got firstly mad protocols and the, the people who run the venue, like they have to make sure that to even get that clearance, they have to make sure that not only they're doing their part, but that we're being socialized to do our part, right? Like, so as artists and then as audiences. But now I would say from like about two weeks ago, things have just been op opening up gradually and especially in terms of artists for event spaces. Um, and that there's some funding opportunities, things like that. Again, that being said, it's just not nearly enough, is it? And for the impact that the, that the virus has actually had, and then the already pre-existing issues about artists and artists and finding space and finding work and freelancing and all these things and our rights and whatnot. Um, so already these are, these are issues that already are a thing, but that are just being like highlighted um, I think. So even though maybe I'm finding a way to move, I know that I was having a conversation with a friend who was saying, oh, I'm so glad that you can find work because I still haven't been able to find work since February. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So really depending, and, and I don't know who gets lucky. I, I don't know who gets, who gets chosen, who hears the call. Um, the government is sending out lots of proposals. I don't know who, I mean, sorry, applications. I don't know who's getting it. Um, and even when people do get it, it's like some of this money is going to come through next year and it just doesn't make sense. So I feel like we're like as cultural because we're in very difficult positions. Like our positions are, are precarious in the first instance, but then we're not, uh, what's it called? We're not essential. You know, they say we're here to beautify. <laughs> so it, it, it becomes even more, it's even more stressful, you know? And then I can't imagine how people are making, people aren't. People aren't making ends meet. People are making deals with their landlords, with their families, with their friends, with their neighbors, with their, yeah. Ambrose, are you back? Yes, 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 I'm back. Okay, so back for now, I'm better. <laughs> yeah, the sound is better. Okay. So I was trying to explain how the situation was in the heat of COVID and how it is now after COVID. For me, I think, COVID has actually ended, even though they still tell us to observe the necessary precautions. You know, like even the heat of COVID-19, we still have children, older women and men still worried about the hunger rate, no job, no good hospital care. They keep telling us we have COVID thousands of numbers. The numbers keep on increasing every day, but we don't actually see them. At the point, at the point, people in the street kind of like feel like, okay, yeah, this sickness is not for us. It is for the rich people, you know, because they, they on the media will have will have names of cases, names of the elite, names of politicians that have actually come out to tell us they have the virus, you know. Some some we say is probably the, for the media PR. For the, you know, but from what we see in the environment, we don't actually see anybody if you draw. They don't actually observe the social distancing. Like, we, people don't really want to know, but we just do it because we've been asked to actually observe the precautions, like to wear the mask, to wash our hands. When they, if we have two sides in Lagos, we have on the island, it's like a place for the end. When you go there, you see, like, oh, these people are actually. Um, staying indoors, they're actually quarantining and all. But when it comes to the other side, we have bustlers in the street. We still have Nigerians, Lagosians, take bossy, 60 teams, 
four four in the city or three like actually packed in major areas in the country you know especially in the state lagos when it comes to the to the lower parts of the state you know so they've been over the years there, there have been cries for for better system in the country tries to have a better government to have better police reforms you know yet they they, they try to cage up with the covid situation whereas be the poor people on the street they, they actually need to go out there and make ends meet you know my summer come out to look like they are violating violating the precaution rules and all but they actually have to go for this thing they actually need to feed we have old women in my area actually telling us there is no corona. When they look at us, we dress up with our nose marks on, with our hand gloves on, with our sanitizer, they actually look at look at us and literally mock us in, in the sense that, oh, why are you guys listening to the government? Don't you know they're lying to you guys? You know, but we as artists and because we know we're like the face of the people, we try to do this thing so people will actually believe that, oh, yes, maybe there is COVID or not. You know, but we don't we don't actually see these cases. Now we are facing the police brutality issue, which has been on for a long time, for for like a decade right now. The government they keep on promising us for a, a better reform, for a solution to it. But right now, everything in the open it seems like the government are actually <laughs> the cause of what we have right now. Like we have evident cases proof to actually show that so so government official has done this has done that to the people that they promised to keep the that they promised safety but this time around they turned out the other hand to actually cause more death right now is that it's like the police brutality the police force has actually caused more death cases than actually the covid cases you know yes. what we the ones we only have is what they tell us the numbers what they tell us on the media, like the number of COVID cases is so, so thousand. But what we can actually see that evidence in our eyes are actually the death cases caused by the police brutality. And now this all protest side of the police brutality, but on the long run, it kind of like seems like we're actually talking about every problem in the country. From the police brutality, we now want a better, better hospital. We want our doctors, our nurses, our policemen we want our police force to be paid properly. We want the Senate to be paid what they are supposed to be paid and not just keep on extorting the people. So I think this thing kind of like threatening the government and that's why they took that drastic, drastic step. You know, so but so, right now the situation is calmer. Okay. So my question to, um, to you all is that if, you know, how do you keep going? you know in the middle of all this Samir you know how do you keep going where do you find the energy to continue I mean on my side I mean um I mean I'm really grateful like I'm, I mean I'm getting some things that keeps myself motivated in order to keep going I mean through this uh, situation and uh it's also like the situation in Tanzania is different from a lot of other countries. So it's also like brings me a, another energy, like as we are not in a lockdown. So I'm kind of like free also like to go out and get like different inspirations or to go to studio and um, practice or research. So for me, like I'm really grateful, like I have this, uh, like I, I'm still somehow like continuing like working and uh, continuing like finding different things to get myself moving and going so go in and yeah I, I think in my case what uh, when the, the the quarantine starts I I had I decided to to, to make a break actually and uh, my last production in Lubumbashi was uh, at the beginning of February, and then I, I decided to not work until March. And, and I think somehow the, the the conversation that we we talked about the movie um, reactivated something in in myself because I I decided to stop and then 
when I start to feel depressed, I decide to start writing without knowing what I'm gonna do with that. And I think when we start the, the, that conversation about the movie, it was like, yeah, I have to do something. I have to, to start doing things. And, uh, and maybe it's not per performance or, you know, online for performance, but it's maybe just writing and singing and, you know, making things. And, and in the, the, the next, you know, the, the next month after ap uh, April, I thought, you know, to be involved in different movie projects because I, I think it was a, a good response for, for me. To, to the, that situation, but also because I knew that I needed to have a space of of creativity, of innovation, of expression. I needed to be, you know, to use my voice, to be a voice and be heard, but also something that I, I really needed during that time is to be, uh, to have someone to talk with. And, you know, to talk with artists, to talk with friends, to talk to my brother and sisters, even if there is a distance somehow. But I needed to talk to people and to be connected, to be part of something. And for me, that is something I felt when I, I, I get in, I get involved in the in that movie as well. That you feel that you are part of something, you are building something with with other people, and that was very helpful. And it, and I think somehow in different projects I have been involved after that, I was looking for that to be heard to be connected and um, yeah i think and that's actually become a strategy um a strategy for me to you know to survive and to, to go through what what is happening now and this one oh so so that's really lovely darling because it feels oh, just a lot of what you say just resonates with me i feel like currently I'm not sure how to how to move or how to, how to make it work, um, but that I'm on a quest and sometimes finding bits of collectives or, or projects or, or something that makes it make sense. Um, but the thing that's most difficult about it, I feel, is that because there's less there's less holding. Let me call it holding, but maybe I mean it's about financial support, but it's about structural support, right? About like institutional support in particular ways. That's just, it's firstly it's the end of the year, right? Um, so people can't start things right now. Um, but then also what what happened happened. So people are busy with other stuff. People are busy trying to save their own companies, etc. Um, so that thing, this, the community that's been there, that is there, I, I don't know, I feel it's slightly, I don't know, it feels more disparate somehow, and that I have to work harder to find and to make those connections, but that when I do, there is a sense of purpose and a sense of grounding. Um, but yeah, it, it's quite difficult, especially because I, I've been kind of thinking or, or trying to conceptualize of myself as a, as a kind of as a kind of worker working like so both okay so I can feed myself but then also working for for collective you, you know liberation or, or resistance or whatever we call it um, and I just I, I feel strange I don't know how to gauge people's comfortability with whether they still feel comfortable moving in similar ways to how we moved so even if I get on stage. I'm working with a group of 10 people. This is actually happening right now. But, and we're choreographing. And I don't know if you're all comfortable touching each other, right? And then when we're talking about like ethics of collective responsibility and like collectively making stuff and being together, like these things that have shifted, which have shifted, like I'm finding it quite difficult um, and that it helps. I, I keep making because there are people around me who also have this impulse to just keep making. And we help each other make sense of it, even when sometimes it really feels there's no, there's not enough holding. <laughs> um, yeah. So, see, for me, um, doing this project and getting in touch with all of you, um, you know, really, I, I would say that it's lifted me up when I was feeling really low. 
and alone. As you just said, it was about like being part of something, being part of a larger circle. And we are isolated and it happens that I was in Europe then, like, okay, what, what is going on? And just knowing that you were there and doing what you were doing, it gave me energy and it gave me hope for myself as well. And I just came back like 12 days ago from the Congo where you know, we spent six weeks. And for the first time since March, I performed. And I performed in my ancestral village. I went to the village. It's a village of 300 people. And it's like, I've not been in front of an audience since March. And then there were all these people and suddenly it felt like it was possible to need a normal performance life where you bring people together, you spend time together. Now I'm back in Europe and here things are shutting down again. Everything is being called off. So like until the end of the year, everything has been called off. So I find it very ironical that for many years, the economic model on which we developed our work was that we'd create work on the African continent and then we'd rely on touring in Europe or in North America to be able to survive. To be able to make it economically viable, we had to come over here. Now that this, you know, like coming here, is impossible for now and it might be for a long time but still on the continent it is still possible to need a normal life does that cross your mind that this could be an opportunity for us to develop platforms on the continent and to try and figure out how to make it viable there and maybe then all the people who are stuck in europe or america will they, they all come and we just make it like the only place where it's possible to need is in Africa. I don't know, what's your take on that? Anyone could jump in. Ambrose. True, like I, I totally understand, but it seemed like the situation was actually kind of really different, actually so dis distinct from the European region to us in Africa. So for us, that kind of like give me a better insight, a better understanding to what, what, it, what time and space actually really means. What does it really mean? Because now COVID opened our eyes. COVID actually locked everybody in their, in their rooms, in their personal spaces at the same time. You know, and, and then it gave us this, this idea like, really what what is the difference between us what is what is the essence of space what is the essence of time because right now i can actually be in a zoom meeting with Faustine, with Doreen, with you know you, you understand what i'm saying so we kind of like saw it as an opportunity to explore now let's assume the whole world is, is in a lockdown for the next 20 years how are we going to actually survive in connection with other people around the world not just in our own immediate environment, which is where social media came into, into a major a major role. Let's look at letters of the continent. It was made possible via social media. We were able to bring all of us together to do this project with you. So that kind of like gave me this better insight on, okay, I think social media is actually the future of technology. If we as Africans too can actually capitalize on this technology, which is social media, into our own advantage, how we can actually use this tool to, to, to be in same shoulder level with the rest of the world. You know what I mean? Like, so I can... Like, uh, I've been thinking about a lot about the idea of resiliency, how to be resilient. And so I turned to like agricultural practices and, and where you have a whole movement worldwide talking about 
locality, you know, being as local as you can. And so I'm just wondering if this crisis is not an opportunity for us as artists to finally being, begin to look inwards and to look for possibilities as local as possible. And above all, how do we make these local spaces economically viable for what we're doing? And therefore, if we connect that with what Ambrose you're talking about, going out stops being like the only way to survive. It becomes like this bonus that expands our horizons, but we've developed locally ways of taking care of ourselves. Of course, it might mean that we need to rethink how we, uh, we approach the economy of what we're doing. We, we need to rethink uh, the, the idea of money and production, money that's needed you know, to put all these things together. But yeah, how is it for you, uh, Samuel? Uh, your sound is microphone. muted. Your sound is muted somewhere. Okay, now I'm on. Eh? Yeah, now you're on. So on my side, it has been quite a, a challenging time because like I had, like for instance, I had some plans this year already, like I was planning to travel around. And uh, like when everything shut down, then it was a really big challenging for me in a sense of also, of, I mean, the thinking on, on like, for instance, on how can I make, for instance, my living just based in Tanzania, for instance, apart from just like depending on out, I mean, outwards, like festivals outside of Tanzania and uh, things outside of Tanzania, like how can I make myself really ground, like really stable just here in Tanzania, just being in Tanzania. So it also like gave me also like a lot of new ways of thinking in a way that I started thinking also of uh, like connecting more with local people and uh, on how also I can uh, use my art as also as a way of uh, living as part of my community, you know, not only like making my performances for international audiences, but also how can I make my work, I mean, based on uh, like my local community. And uh, I'm really grateful that we, there's a project coming up, which is uh, like, it's a dance for the community. Like I go and we perform in uh, public spaces here in Dar es Salaam, and as a way also to bring the people together and also to, for us artists to be recognized by the local community, you know? So this is really like what has been going on on my side and, um, Yes. And this one. So like I've been, I think maybe a lot of us have been trying to think about this continent thing, how to, how to look in again, right? Maybe since Gaddafi, if we're allowed to say that. Um, but that, so of course the problem of, 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 of the economy, but I think it, there's an issue of trust, okay? And of, of trust in, in the continent. And that there is an opportunity, but I think for me, more than an opportunity to for, for us to be able to travel work and for us to create like new artist network or to strengthen artist network is like for us to build a, like a real kind of continental solidarity. And that's actually what the work is. And it's, it's, oh, I, oh, I even try to think. So, okay, a couple of weeks ago, our, one of our minister guys, Paul Mashaba, who is South African, okay. So we all know South Africa has got this problem of xenophobia. Lord knows, but South Africa has this problem. This guy who is in parliament, this guy, um, he's an MP and he says on the news, like two, two local newspapers that, yes, okay, South Africans must be prioritized, nama, 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 things about illegals, the same rhetoric, the same rhetoric that always comes out of people. And always more frightening when it comes out of people in power, right? And the last time it came out of somebody's mouth, it came out of um, the, 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 the KZN King, right? And then there was necklacing and burning and all of this stuff. So it's like, for me, it, it, it would have to begin there. Like how do, how, when, when seeds of mistrust are being sown by these like puppet government people that we don't even understand. So there's, there's barely an opportunity for us to actually get to know each other. 
and like I, I, I I'm trying to think how to how even when we're when when we're doing this thing and curating these artists kind of networks like how yeah how we integrate the work of, of solidarity building on the continent into that and and I know that it, it it's part of like I do know that it's part of it of course um but it almost feels to me like because there is there are people who travel on this continent there, there are okay just in the same way that there are people who travel to Europe and not not all of us do and some some people are going to start and then <laughs> like COVID screwed everything up but even before then there was all there's always a conversation and I've heard that there's always a conversation when people from the continent find themselves in Europe or in the US or wherever and they say hey why do we always meet here why aren't we meeting in yeah and then people say where's the infrastructure and then people will name oh there's this festival here there is this festival here there's this festival here right so there is an existing there are existing ports let's say okay which are hubs of festivals. So even outside of festivals, there are academic institutions. There are local community organizations, which are, are dance-based or whatever, which are working with kids. And you know what I mean? So th there are all of these things, these networks. So does it, does it maybe start with like the individual being like, what is here already? And then like touching base with that. But at the same time, I, I feel like it runs the risk of becoming an, a, too much of an individualist thing and even an elitisty, artisty thing if the work of what is actually happening on the continent, you know, what's happening with us collectively. Um, and yeah, sure, art, art can be used to redress that, um, but then a, a kind of program, even an arts-based program, et cetera, that for me, and it's just because of how I, I think about things, that kind of privileges that like okay let's first even conceive of of a unity um yeah but i'm, I'm not yeah i'm not really sure there, there is an opportunity and the opportunity is now like we are locked down we are locked down and it is easier to travel between here and and tanzania for example although even then it is a little things um there was because now that the, the numbers have started to rise again some flights which were which were going around especially in the sadic region have been like kind of cancelled things like that um, things are becoming more expensive because there are fewer flights and things are riskier, etc. So, I mean, I guess this is what you were saying a bit fast and about that we have to reconceptualize of an economic model. And then when we're coming to that thing of economic model, like we have to think of who produces this work. Do we trust our respective governments to help us in this feat of a project, you know? And if it's not, if we're saying it's corporate, it's private, is corporate in the time right now to be able to do these things? So then it's, it's, it's up to us, okay? Essentially, it's always up to us. But then how do we, how been, do we resource? Hmm? As it's yeah. been for Yes, as it's been. Forever. <laughs> as it's been. Um, and then how do we, how do we actively actually pull those resources? Like, I, I don't know. Yes, yes, there, there is a moment. Um, but there is, I, just to signpost that there is a lot of particular kinds of work. And like speaking as a South African, there's particular kinds of work that even artists in South Africa need to do, right? So that we're, when, we're, when we're around and we're connecting and we're gallivanting on the continent, there is a sensitivity, there is an ingrained respect, which should be there in the first place. Um, but that, yeah, all of the people who probably would be in place normally to be able to fund such things or not even fund to be able to help such programs are normally the people who are getting in the way of us trying to. So I don't know, lots of chats. Doreen. Yeah, I, I think in my case, since I think since the beginning of the quarantine, I thought, and I, I told you when we had that conversation about the movie, that I was thinking a lot about what it means to be home, because it was advice that was given to people, stay home, but so that raised in me that question, what home, what means to be home? And uh, and of course, I, I start to to think about again because it started already a, a couple of years ago when I decided to come back to Lubumbashi. What relationship I have with the city? What relationship I have with Lubumbashi, with the community, with my own family uh, as well? What needs to be home? To be in my own home? To be in my you know parent home? What what connection I have with with them? And and for me, this situation is really an opportunity, as you said, is an opportunity to open uh, dialogues and have having conversation with people 
uh, around you and also a conversation with myself and to, to get closer to me and, and to think about uh, caring, to take care of me, of myself, but also of people that are uh, around me. And because I, I needed that. Um, I wanted to, to talk a, a bit about, you know, the digital cause it become a, a thing to you know to to perform uh, to perform live so I, I think i also had time to before start doing things to 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 raise those questions and find answer uh, and answers and my position about that is i use a lot a, a lot you know social media but for me it's more about uh, to to communicate and say to people I'm still here, so it's, I'm I'm waving my flag. I'm still here, but I don't use it uh, to um, you know for performing because I'm not. Je suis pas à l'aise avec ça. I don't feel comfortable to perform that way. I, I, I'm a dancer first. Is a, a performing art. Is an art life. I want to have a connection with the audience. I'm open to use the digital, but my my fear is. And I think is happening now is becoming a system that's mm -hmm. conditioning us to to do it that way. Where where when we could spend more time to doing things locally where we live, and 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 I'm I'm more interesting by that, and and that's why we with the support of the Studio Quebeco, uh, among other other partners, we try to have a, a Congolese to of my last production, which is dealing uh, with homophobia. So it's really challenging, you know, um, thing to do in Congo and now, but I think it's important to have this kind of project because I want to have, you know, conversation uh, with my community and be able to talk because we need that. We need to, to care, um, of each other and we need to be able to talk and to hear each other because we need that. We are not in the context, uh, in a country that care of us or protects us. So we have to do that. We, we cannot wait a protection from, from the government. They will not do anything uh, for us. I think this situation has to be an opportunity to, you know, to open uh, spaces where it's possible to have a, a real talk because we need that. Yeah. Can I, if, if, so, yeah sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, something that she said that that was very interesting to me. This um, the thing of all of a sudden now we're being conditioned to make work in very particular way. I am very uncomfortable with it. Like I was talking to some to some people that I, so I'm doing my MA and I was talking to some people who said we came here to do a performance degree, a live performance degree, a theater, live theater and performance degree, and now I'm a filmmaker, right? I'm a filmmaker behind the camera. I'm a filmmaker in front of the camera. And, and then I thought to myself like, oh, okay, it's been interesting to, for me. I've welcomed it. Um, although there have been particular things that I've been uncomfortable with because of the, the, the connection, a particular kind of a connection. But then also this thing of like oversaturating a particular field, right? And this thing that some people actually don't have an interest, even if people have an interest in film, don't have an interest in, in creating content for digital media. It's a completely different new thing um and so there's also for me sorry just just because of what you said it just brought that thing up for me that there is something that i worry maybe in the time and in corona and is getting lost and continues to get lost because okay we are in a moment where we're being forced to like reconcile what our form is or like what does it look like now that you know maybe we can't touch maybe actors can't touch so the theater that i work at um sometimes they have this rule that the actors on stage acting also can't touch. So what is that? Yeah. And then what is that? And everybody obviously like uh, watches performances by themselves. But then when we take it out to the streets, um, you know, and, and, and old intimacies, like is that thing of, oh, we can't brush past strangers now going to translate even further. And that thing of we're going to stay looking down. That thing of having masks and not being able to recognize people. These, these things, social intimacies and what's happened with them. Right. And like this kind of conditioning and even art form if our art form is about particular kinds of social intimacies. And I'm really worried about what's happening to that. 
You know, um, Ambrose with the uh, West, uh, West Side um, style, yes. uh, your collective in Lagos, you've yes. been exploring these digital yes. platforms for almost five, or more than five years now. So, yes. you know, could you just talk to us a bit about that experience prior to COVID and what is happening? Now, because of, you know, of all of us here, you are the one who've been more on that path already. It's funny. It's funny how everything started. You know. You know when. You know when. They, when they say you you do the things you thought you knew, but you never knew. You know, like more like as if we knew that this period was going to come but on oh, oh, uh, you know, and it all started with okay we come uh, ahead can you can you can you hear me uh, so could you maybe uh, if if it continues like this you could just switch off your video this way we can hear you okay if, can you hear me yeah is it better? much better oh okay Okay, so I have to start all over. Yes, please. So, you know, yeah, it, this whole thing started like, um, it's, it's crazy, you know, you know when, when they tell you stuff like, when you, you, you do the things you thought you knew, but you never knew, you know, it was more like, we are already prepared for this current situation, unknown to us. First thing, can you hear me? Can everybody yeah. hear me? Yeah, yeah, we, we can hear you. Yeah, so I can hear you. We, we, yeah, so disseminating our works on social media kind of like it started with what do we need to do? It's, it was a yearn for us to be heard to like an escape, like what can we do to be to be heard? Like more people to actually see where we are from, our reality, how we connect with ourselves and our immediate environment and why we want to connect with the rest of the world. You know, we tried doing it locally, but even our own people refuse to listen to us you know listen to what the for some weird reason they were blind to what we we're actually trying to tell them because this is what we do this is what we face together but you as my brother or sister can't even see it you know so that but did, that's it, did that change when you put it on social media yes or did something it changed, begin to change it changed it changed when we started you know uh, putting the work and disseminating it via social media start to like invite good interest from certain people that actually understand what we're trying to do because they, they could relate with it and in the long run it kind of like lured our own people into what we're trying to do they kind of like saw better oh, oh yeah like oh i know this i know that oh this is familiar but like yeah you've been seeing it all along but we're just showing it to you now and you can see it clearly you know so like going back to what Kundiswa and Doreen were saying about um, the difference, that like it's different when you actually want to perform live like as an artist, when you want to, it's a, it's a different connectivity you as an artist now with, with your real time audience. And now because of COVID and what the situation is, the old, and what this current situation is trying to force us into, trying to condition us into, uh, I, won't, I wouldn't want to call it, not real, something like it's, it's virtual, like like it's not real. But I have this question, like as an artist, because I believe that as an artist, we have abilities to do whatever, like to do the unimaginable. Yes, it is different when we perform live, like when we want to connect really with the streets, how it is physically with the actual feeling as an African, as a black man. But now things are actually changing you know, like I said earlier, we're in the social media world, virtual world. It seems like social media is the future of technology. Whether we like it or not, technology is going to keep evolving. Same as our culture is supposed to evolve as well. You know, but as, as artists, how, how do we come into play? How do we, how do we, how do we try to define the time? I know let time define us, even though we are aware that things are actually changing. You know, how can I on social media, how can I come on social media, how can I come to the virtual world and actually perform and still make you feel me and still make you connect with me? 
is it possible and if not possible how can you go about it how can you really connect to let's actually let's actually be realistic the world was actually a lockdown for about six months about six months and similar situation happened centuries ago in the 1890s with the spanish flu that one that one it lasted for about a year you know like imagine if you were actually locked down for 20 decades like you don't you don't have you don't have access to that true connection you have with the streets, with your with your everyday reality, you have to be locked down in your room. So you actually still need the virtual world to even connect with, with the people in your locality. This is not even really about people outside your locality, because you can't actually go out of your room. How can you connect with them virtually and not lose the connection with them? Still have the real essence of why we are together as a community and as yes. Yeah. So these are the questions we, we, in the long run, started having in our mind. COVID kind of like gave us this, you know, how can I, I can be in front of the, it's not necessarily about the world watching me virtually. It's really about how I'm feeling at that moment. How, I, what I really want to see, what I want, really want to do with this particular content or how I'm feeling from inside. But the medium I have is this virtual media. How can I connect with you? This is the work. This is the work of my hand as an artist. How can I really, really make you connect with me virtually? So, so I, I, I feel like I feel like we can create a bridge. We can create a balance between how it is really the way we want it, and what the world is conditioning us, conditioning us to be. How can we create a bridge as an artist, as a black artist? So I think this is what these are the questions which you have in mind. Yeah. And what I can hear from all the questions you're asking yourself is that question of like the, the necessity and the urgency to yes. go out there and yes. say something that is yes. important to you and yes. using every platform possible. Yes. Because yes. this burning fire needs to get out. And yes. so if the only thing that's left is the virtual, then you dive in there because that's all you have. So it's like, yeah. uh, see, I said earlier on that I've been reading and studying uh, things about different agricultural um, methods. And in permaculture, for instance, uh, one of the principles is that the problem is the solution. So, if we start looking at every problem we face as containing its own solution, and somehow I trust that that's what all of you have been doing. That's what all of us have been doing to be able to survive and to dream on this continent where the hurdles are so, so, so much. And sometimes you wonder even how people can be able to dream there, but yeah. How can we make every problem actually a solution? And how can we use this as a way of looking inwards? And my, one of my hopes when we, I started this project uh, around the letters from the continent, it was that to just get to talk to different artists on the continent and to hear as many perspectives as possible, which I was hoping for my own selfish needs would help me continue my own journey as a citizen, as an artist. But the hope was also that you could start talking because when you talk of solidarity, it's like we need to meet first of all. And how do we meet and how do we begin the conversation? And so how can this kind of opportunity be a way of starting that so that tomorrow, I know that if I'm in Lagos, I know I have someone to go to. And I can say I have a home. And the same if I went to, uh, to Dar es Salaam, you know. Samuel. I don't know if you want to say something. Ah, your microphone is off ah. again. Ah, my, my microphone is already muted. So, I mean, on my side, I mean, I mean, I had some similar kind of question being asking myself on, uh, because 
as the relevant uh, situation now is uh, the current situation now like forced us as artists to adapt with the new normal is uh, like we have to keep uh, working and we have to keep sharing our works and uh, we have to tell our i mean our, our voices has to be heard and uh, like we find like the only like the only one way at the mo the possible one way that to we could be had is through online platforms. And uh, like one of the questions I've been asking myself is how to, how we as artists, can we make our work like real? As like we, I, has, I hear a lot of things from the artists that like the virtual is like, it's not real. Like it's just something a bit like artificial in a sense, but uh, like what, like how we as artists can you really think of our way, our ways of uh, telling our ideas in a way that uh, like will be real in this uh, virtual reality, you know? So. And this, uh, what you say to that, how can we make even the virtual real? Because it's a reality anyway. So I think, I mean, it's, it is real, it is happening. We are in the process of it. For me, I'm very interested in, in then playing with the form, with the digital form. Either how can I affect it with my liveness, right? Um, or the very thing that makes it feel like it's not real. How do I, yeah? Um, but then also how do I allow this that I know to be affected by this new thing? Firstly, because it can't not be affected but also because it makes it more interesting. So I think also just to look on it as an opportunity to, and especially because as art makers, sometimes I feel um, we get stuck in particular kinds of decadences, our own disciplinary decadences, which I, I already feel myself sometimes speaking from that, from that point. So how do we disrupt that, right? And create more of a community. Um, and I'm also really liking what you say about these opportunities in these panels as well, being like, oh, okay, here's somebody that I didn't know. Yeah, let me follow you on Instagram. And when borders are open again properly and I find myself in, I'm gonna hit you up because chances are there's, I don't know anybody there, you know what I mean? And um, you don't wanna come into a place as a tourist, it's always better to, to, to embed. Mm -hmm. Um, but that right now, th this is the reality of what we have with each other, right? Um, and so e even that thing of like, if I'm looking at in Instagram, for example, and connect with each other on Instagram and those curations, but those curations aren't any less effective or even any less real, any less you or feeling um, than anything else. So maybe it's at first about shifting a particular kind of mindset and, and welcoming this thing right um, and then welcoming the new learning that's going to come from it and then knowing that there are other people on the other side of the screen there are other people who are feeling similar to how you're feeling who are thinking similar to how you're thinking um, and that you can connect and you can connect in real time look at us connecting in real time yeah. cross continents is it is it too yeah you know what i mean cross countries it's incredible hmm. see um one thing beautiful about our continent is that we've always embraced everything that comes our way and turn it into something else. You know, so I also, I also trust that whatever is coming our way today, we'll embrace it and we'll make it ours. And so I, you know, I'm very privileged to connect with all of you and to be able to listen to your voices. And through this film, I felt that, you know, it's like, no, the world, the world may be locked down, but life continues. You're still there. And so please keep dreaming. Please keep making us dream because we need you and keep transforming this world. So um, yeah, we have like a couple of minutes so to just wrap it up. So we could just go around and do in. Yeah.
yes, I think the the, the it's an honor for me to, to you know to 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 have this conversation conversation with you because I think we we learn a lot from each other. It was also an honor to be connected to other people and to listen to every stories of different artists part of the the movie because it, it, it was for me something that gave me uh, strength that I needed. And to have this conversation, have the same, you know, give me the same feeling. And, you know, talking about, you know, digital, I think for me, I'm really open to that as long as I don't lose the, the power to be able to, to say who I am and to, you know, to, to write my own narrative. And, and for me, my, the fear that I have about conditioning is losing that, that if someone else that decides to, to you know, how I should present myself and introduce myself, or use my work, or present my work. So for me, I, I really uh, is a is a is a issue is a is a, is a question that I, I still have to find a, a good answer, a good strategy. So I, I keep learning from you know from you, from other people, and uh, yes, but it's an opportunity, as you said, uh, is a we have is a problem, but the solution is there. And this one. Uh... So for me, it's also just, I think I haven't mentioned it, that like I really appreciated also the opportunity to, in the middle of a very difficult situation, to create something, you know, in the middle of a dead time. It was a dead time. Um, and in some aspects, like it either has been or continues to be. Um, and then just the opportunity to, to reflect on, it was a deep reflection on myself. Um, and then to also then watch the little clips that I saw up until I saw the, the final film, to then see other people's reflections and to feel that connection and to really appreciate that this was about us, but that there is a through line, there really is um, on this continent. And that it doesn't, it doesn't need to be said, but um, I felt and feel incredibly connected um, to everybody's stories and to everybody. And I appreciate these opportunities. And the fact that Faustin, that you are thinking of it like this, like the, the gathering points, the gathering points. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. And thank you to, and thank, to all of you. Oh. Ambrose, quickly. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Very well. <laughs> First of all, uh, Faustin and the rest of your team, like I would say, you guys, you guys are like God sent <laughs> to us. <laughs> you know, the, this project actually came at the right time for us. Like apart from the global situation and all, it was also a, a very personal um, time for us. So we you know we lost, we lost one of us. So it was a very difficult time for us and also looking at what we are going through in our immediate environment. So when the project came, yeah, we were actually experiencing it, but when the project came and we were about to start work, the work actually made us, you know, you know what? We we're actually experiencing it, but actually we actually need to look into it really, you know, consider every element, consider what, what how the people are actually reacting to the current situation in order for us to actually create a piece, a, 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 a letter, Elector actually, so it was really, really personal for them. We appreciate the whole, this whole initiative and looking at all the emails sent to us and considering the whole essence of why you're actually doing this for us as young artists. It's, 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 it's a huge experience. It's a, it's a special experience connecting with you, connecting with Conduzba, connecting with Doreen and the rest of, of, of us. So it is it's, it's, it's a God sent <laughs> project for us. It's it, 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 like it, 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 a medium for us to, you know what, well, let's, let's put in this whole energy into something positive. You know, so we seized it and I'm glad it came out. We, and it was also a, a period where nothing was actually happening, no job, nothing. So, but first thing, and you came with a project to actually give us a boost to our morale, like to give us this sense of belonging to, you know, even someone outside the country that actually, actually has interest in young artists around the, the continent, you know, that really gave us a, a little spark of hope and, and light in the midst of the terrible, terrible times. 
So the Still. one of a kind put there for us, actually. Thank so you just, very much. Using this opportunity to thank you with the rest on behalf of the rest of the crew. We thank you and the rest of the initiative, the rest of the team. Thank you, you know, very much. Um yeah, our time is up. So yeah, this is the problem when you put Africans together, they always go over time. You know? So sorry, Simon. <laughs> We just can't stop, oh, well. you know, but hey, you know, some people have watches. We have time, really. <laughs> Hi. Hey. <laughs> time is fine for Stan, Samuel, Kondiswa, Doreen, uh, Ambrose. Thank you so much not only for now, for sharing so much about your ways of working and your insights into how we can all continue, but, but also your contributions to the film, which I found powerful and moving, but also ultimately really inspiring. So um, I'm keen, if you haven't seen the film, uh, that uh, you, the viewers out there in uh, internet space and time, uh, log in to our website, which is www.cecartslink.org. The film is streaming uh, for free uh, until midnight New York City time on Sunday, November the 1st. So do see it while you can. Uh, and for Stan, we will uh, see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow. A little later, though, at, at noon to give... Um, Peter, time to wake up in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. <laughs> so uh, thank you all so much. Thank you.